You hear this kind of stuff a lot from these young women on TikTok where I don't go, but my staff does and they know. Um, I post on TikTok, but I just, it's not my thing, but I, you know, that's, I want my message out in front of the young people. So I have no problem posting there until it is banned and no longer available in the United States. Um, <laughs> there's a mom influencer, mom fluencer, whatever. Her name is Paige Connell. And she had some thoughts on the division of labor in a marriage. Listen to this. So here's a list of things that I don't do for my husband. I don't do his laundry. He can do that himself. I do my laundry and we do the kids laundry but he does his own. I don't cook dinner. He cooks dinner every single night. I do breakfast and lunch for us and our kids. I don't pack him a lunch. If he's hungry, he'll figure out what he's gonna eat for lunch the same way that I do. I don't make his doctor's appointments because guess what? He's not making mine. Would it be kind of me to do that? For sure. Is it my job? Absolutely not. Doing his laundry, cooking him dinner, making him lunch, booking his doctor's appointments, all those things, that's domestic labor. Do I do them occasionally when he's working a lot? Of course. It is not my job as a wife. It is not in my job description to do all the domestic labor as small acts of kindness to my partner and receive nothing in return. She seems fun, Allie Beth. What do you think? Yeah, I- <laughs> yeah she's super annoying to me. She's now, so I don't think that you have to make your husband's doctor's appointments in order to be qualified as a good wife and mom. I think you and your husband can decide the division of labor. I think that that's fine. It is her attitude, her entitlement, her posturing here that I'm not going to do that because that's domestic labor and I deserve to be compensated for that. It's not enough for me just to do it out of grace and kindness for my husband. That is the wrong attitude that I guarantee is a recipe for a power struggle and disaster down the line. So it's not even necessarily that I take issue with what she and her husband decide that they're going to do as far as chores, whatever. You can decide upon that. But uh, this attitude I just found really, really off-putting. I just like so much of the young, the messaging from young people these days, Britt, is like, there's going to be like a contract agreement between the two of us. It's going to be written down. This is how, I mean, there's a whole book that was very successful that speaks to exactly this. I, I don't get it, right? Like in, in my marriage, we're just kind of organic. It's like, I don't know how Doug got in charge of taking out the garbage and I'm not. It's just cleverness and ignoring the job by me over many, many years. <laughs> like I don't see having more organically. I don't get like this, the True. negotiation, like everything seems so point driven, you know, like, well, we're in yes. competition with one another. And like me, me doing mm -hmm. more for you is somehow a loss for me, even though mm -hmm. you're the person or at least one of them, including my children who I love more than anyone else on this earth. How is this like a win loss ratio? Yeah. I mean, what Ali said, she annoys me. I went through her TikTok and every single one of her posts is like that. I almost think that it's like a persona she's created. And that's like the whole social contagion is it's like you have to put on this act and really get those shares, you know, so you're going to say something super controversial to get people to click it and share it because you want that fame. That's what I get from her. I agree. My husband and I like are very much like you, Megan, where stuff just happened organically. It wasn't like we drew out this contract of you're going to do this. I'm going to do this. It just happened over the course of 15 years. Um, yes. And I do agree with some of the things she said, like my husband does his own laundry because when we were dating, he made it very clear that he didn't want me to shrink his stuff. So he just, he does his own laundry and it's not Great. any like, yeah, me, like I'm not going to take on that menial labor, but that's what she made it into. And I think that's what Allie was saying that I agree with. It's the the spirit behind it. It's the spirit of this weird competition. And I think it's also the social contagion of you're going to post something to get people talking, you know? You're right. Um, I, I'm like, yeah. what, can you imagine like what life is like between the, the sheets for these two? Like I was no. just on top for five minutes. Now I want you on top. No, it's, <laughs> what, it's, it's unequal. No, come on. It's got to be perfectly even. Like, you went there. You, you went there. <laughs> honestly, like I had two orgasms. You have to have two orgasms. What, what kind of a weird relationship is this? Oh, I'm going to write it, it down in my little think. tally. <laughs> it makes you think. I have six brothers. I would never set them up with someone like her. No, 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 heck no, no, God, no. no. I, Hard no. That's a problem. Hard she doesn't no. realize how unattractive she's making herself. And I guarantee that the husband is not a manly man. That was another thing that Harrison Bucker was right about. In fact, let me play that soundbite, SOT 36. To the gentleman here today, part of what plagues our society is this lie that has been told to you that men are not necessary in the home or in our communities. As men, we set the tone of the culture. And when that is absent, disorder, dysfunction, and chaos set in. This absence of men in the home is what plays a large role in the violence we see all around the nation. Other countries do not have nearly the same absentee father rates as we find here in the U.S., 
and a correlation could be made in their drastically lower violence rates as well. Be unapologetic in your masculinity, fighting against the cultural emasculation of men. Do hard things. Never settle for what is easy. Amen, Ali Beth. So good. Masculinity, like all different forms of strength, can be wielded both for good and for evil. The same masculinity that can be used in negative uh, aggression, uh, used in a way to intimidate women, like we saw with P. Diddy, is also the kind of masculinity that builds civilizations and that protects uh, virtue and protects the most vulnerable. And so all this talk about toxic masculinity, you forget how necessary masculinity is for the flourishing, for the survival survival of families, of communities, of societies. And so I'm really glad to hear him say that because he's absolutely right. Can your savings weather an economic storm? Think about what you've put away for the future. Inflation can render cash worthless. Real estate can crash like it did in 08. Economies built on a mountain of debt can fall like a house of cards. There are very few physical assets you can invest in that can stand the test of time. But gold has withstood as a valued form of money. It's why many people are flocking to it now and why birch gold is busier than ever. Through a little-known tax loophole, birch gold lets you convert a retirement account into a tax-sheltered IRA in physical gold. And the best part? It doesn't cost you one cent out of pocket. To learn more, text MK to 989898 and claim your free info kit on gold. Again, can your IRA or 401k weather an economic storm? If not, consider looking into birch gold. Just text MK to 989898 and explore securing your savings today. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.